be a great slate of college football in week 8. In this video, we're going to be going over the best bets and the best picks you can make for the 10 best matchups for this week. Starting at number 10, we've got some action here. 6-1 Miami versus 6-1 Toledo. Yes, uh, we have two max schools because usually by this point of the season, most max schools are have two or three losses at least. Uh, but both are 6-1. Miami only lost to Miami, Miami, Florida, and Toledo only lost on the road on the last second field goal to Illinois. So both are going to be fighting for the best record in the MAC. I think Toledo uh, already leads their division, and they are definitely going to be the, the favorite to win. Uh, they're only two and a half points favorite in this one, but my picks are going to be Toledo straight up, and I think they cover the two and a half points spread. They're twelve and six on the road as an away favorite uh, in the last five years, so I would take Toledo uh, over Miami University. Number nine, we got Iowa Hawkeyes over uh, against Minnesota Golden Gophers. Iowa's three and a half point favorite. The over under is thirty two and a half. Very very freaking low, but as you guys saw last week, Iowa, Wisconsin, I think the total was what, 18? It was 12 to 6. Uh, Iowa had that really big win. I, I guaranteed Wisconsin to win that game, and I was so wrong. Uh, Iowa actually showed out their defense. I mean, again, they only gave up six points. Uh, how bad their offense has been. Their defense, again, will always keep them in games, and it basically won it for them last week. Defense ranked sixth, offense ranked 81. Minnesota's offense is not much better at 66. Their defense is still pretty good, just not anywhere close to what Iowa's is. And uh, Iowa's beaten uh, a little bit better opponents, at least the record strength is 10th right now, which is actually very surprising. Um, but I, I'm also going to go with Iowa straight up. I'm going to go with them on the three and a half points. I think they win by more than a field goal, probably more than a touchdown as well, over lowly uh, Minnesota, who's not going in the right direction. Uh, so those are my two picks for, uh, for this week for number nine matchup. Number eight in the Big 12, West Virginia versus Oklahoma State, both four and two. Both look to see they can be uh, whoever wins will be one game away from making bowl eligibility, uh, which would be more surprising for West Virginia because most power ratings preseason, they're rated as the worst team in the Big 12, or at least at the bottom, like three or four. Uh, but they've surprised a lot of people. They've actually lost. They've lost the last two though, after starting off 4-0. Uh, but they could definitely rebound in this game. The three and a half point favorites to Oklahoma State, uh, who's not doing it uh, as bad as people thought themselves. Both teams are basically identical in offensive, defensive, record strength, and the strength of schedule. Only thing I'm going to make and say the determining factor here: West Virginia is 16 and two as a home favorite, while Oklahoma State's 4-9 as a road underdog. I think West Virginia is going to win this game straight up, but in the, in the spread, I do think Oklahoma State covers. I think it'll be a field goal game, and uh, but West Virginia moved to five and two, while Oklahoma State goes to four and three. Number seven, another Big 12 matchup: Kansas State versus TCU. TCU is very, very much overrated in the preseason, and they got beat by uh, Colorado Week One, uh, and they weren't doing too well. But they're actually four and three, which is surprising how, how average I think they've been. Uh, Kansas State's the same way; they're four and two. I I thought they were doing a lot better, but I guess they've already lost two games. Um, they beat Texas Tech last week uh, to move to 4-2. Uh, both are basically even in the offensive and defensive categories, although uh, Kansas State's basically twice as good as their record strength, uh, and they've their strength of schedule is a lot tougher than TCU's has been, 68th versus 18th. Once again, I'm going to take the, the the home favorite in this one. I think Kansas State wins. I think they cover the 6.5 point spread. They're 18-5 and five as a home favorite in uh, the last five years, so I mean, and TCU's 2-9. So, I mean, this is this has to be an easy pick for Kansas State to beat TCU uh, straight up. Number eight, Oregon against Washington State. Oregon coming off that devastating close loss to Washington on the road. Had every chance to at least tie the game or send it into overtime. But Dan Landing made some very crucial mistakes. Two at the goal line and then one at the end and fourth down should have punted. Uh, got, gets Oregon to 5-1 and one, uh, instead of a 6-0. Uh, they also, but they they go back home. They faced a Washington State team that started off 4-0, but has lost the last two games uh, to, fall, to fall to 4-2. And, two. and uh, it doesn't look good for Was Washington State in this one. Oregon is a 20-point favorite, and I think they will cover. I think Oregon not only wins, but they cover the 20 points, three touchdowns. I mean, they've just been unstoppable in the last five years as a home favorite. 29 and one. 29 and one. 29 in the last 30 games they won as, a, as when they've been a favorite at home. That's a remarkable stat line. Uh, and then it'd be almost impossible to pick against Oregon, looking at those two numbers there in the bottom. So that's why I'm picking Oregon straight up. And I think Washington State does not have a good of a defense. Well, Oregon actually showed they have a decent defense, you know, at certain times. And Washington's offense just isn't that good. So that's why I'm picking Oregon, not only money line, but with the spread as well. Miami versus Clemson. Now, you go back a few weeks ago, uh, take away some of these. Uh, a field goal uh, against Florida State and a uh, one of the worst decisions a uh, head coach could ever make at Miami. This might be a very, very different matchup uh, going into this game. Both might have been 5-1 and probably be ranked in the top 15. But 
either way, Clemson and Miami are 4-2, both unranked. I think Clemson is just a better team. Clemson, uh, Miami's just not that good. I think they've been overrated all year. Their strength of schedule has shown that. 91st versus 32 for Clemson. Obviously, Clemson's played uh, the tougher, you know, the toughest team in the ACC. They played Florida State. Uh, Miami lost to UNC uh, last week. I think Clemson's a much better team. 20-4 on uh, as a road favorite in the last five years. Miami's only been a home, they've only been an underdog four times in the last uh, four years, five years as a as a home team. Um, and they're two and two. But uh, Columbus is just a better team, like I said. They're going to cover the spread. They're going to win straight up. And I think Miami's going to go back to the uh, the bottom seller and uh, going to be a bottom dweller. Dilly dilly. Number four, the third Saturday in October, Alabama versus Tennessee. Alabama's number 11, Tennessee's number 17 in the AP rankings. Alabama's a nine and a half point favorite in this one. Over under is only 49. So they're thinking, Vegas is thinking that defense is going to prevail in this one. And uh, I mean, the, the analytics show so as well. Defense, Alabama is the number one rated overall efficient defense, where while Tennessee is rated 15th overall efficiency in defense. Uh, both are pretty decent at record strength. Alabama's fifth, Tennessee's 24th. Strength of schedule is a lot tougher for uh, Alabama than Tennessee has played. Obviously, they played Texas and they played uh, Ole Miss. Two of the better teams, you know, in college football right now, where Tennessee lost to Florida and they beat uh, AM last week, who isn't that good, but still a decent team. But either way, there's an, if there isn't a hotter team in football right now than probably Michigan, Penn State, or Ohio State, it's got to be Alabama. Since that Texas game or since that South Florida game, Alabama's been crushing people mississippi state they crushed Ole miss yet again they beat arkansas by a lot i mean this i don't know why jalen miller wasn't the starting quarterback all year but he is definitely put on a show and alabama is one of the better teams right now they're, they're gonna win this game i think they're gonna get revenge from last year playing at home but at the same time i think tennessee covers the spread i mean 10 points is a lot um in this kind of matchup and i think they cover the nine and a half but i think they lose alabama moves to seven and one on the season Number three, USC is coming off that blowout loss on the road at Notre Dame last week. While Utah still hasn't figured out their quarterback situation, but somehow, some way, is still five and one uh, in the national rankings. Uh, USC has a number one offense, terrible in defense, and you see Utah is basically the opposite. They're 28th in offense, but one of the better defenses in the country. Both are even in record strength, uh, although Utah has played a much tougher schedule so far. USC is a seven-point favorite. I think USC wins this, but I think Utah covers. I think USC will get out to a big lead like it did against uh, uh, Colorado, or at least, you know, 14 points maybe, and then Utah's going to close the gap, but still ultimately, you know, might make it with it. Might be exactly seven, I don't know, but I don't think USC wins by more than seven in this one, but I think they win straight up. Number two, Florida State versus Duke. Duke is one of the more surprising uh, teams to come out of nowhere in the preseason. Uh, I, I'm not surprised because they had the number one returning production last year. But 5-1, their highest rank since I think 2013 when they played in the ACC title game against the same Florida State school. Um, Duke is a 14.5 point underdog in this one. Florida State's the favorite, obviously. I think I'm going to take Florida State straight up. I think Florida State's just too good of a team compared to Duke. But I think Duke covers. 14 points is a lot. Even though they're on the road, I think Duke is a much better and more quality team than most people would say. And I think Florida State isn't as good as a quality team as most people would say. Yeah, they had a big win against LSU, and yeah, they pulled that one off against Clemson, but they've had tough games against Boston College. I mean, and Duke's only loss was on the last like fifth, like 30 seconds against Notre Dame. Uh, so, and, I mean, it's I, I think this is going to be a close game. I think Florida State's going to ultimately win, but 14 points is a lot. I think Duke's going to cover that. And uh, I think Florida State will move to 7-0. Duke will still be in the hunt for the ACC title chase. Uh, but we'll get a loss in this one. Now, the big monumental colossal matchup between all, number three, Ohio State, and number seven, Penn State. I put on the bottom there, I put my CFP stamp of approval. This has major college football playoff implications to this one. Both teams are ranked in the top five in everybody's power ratings. Um, both teams have, you know, number 11 record strength for Penn State, number four for Ohio State. Both in the top 10 of both offensive and defensive categories. Uh, obviously, Penn State has played a lot, much easier schedule than Ohio State. Ohio State has played Maryland and they played Notre Dame, so that's why their schedule is a lot, lot bigger. And if you look at the bottom there, I mean, it's it's so tough to pick against Ohio State. 32 out of the last 34 games as a home favorite, they've won. While Penn State, as being the road underdog, uh, only been at seven times in five years, but they're two and five in said games. I, I, I think most of those losses were against Ohio State. Um, but I something about me just tells you this this Penn State team is just different. And th their offense and defense have been good, and they have a pretty good quarterback. I don't know if he's proven yet with Drew Allar versus Kyle McCord, but 
I just feel something about this Penn State team, and I think they're going to win. Not only they're going to cover the three and a half, I think they're going to ultimately win straight up. And this is a 46 and a half point over under. I don't. I, I just think Penn State's going to win this, and I think uh, Ohio State. I don't know. Where, whoever wins this is going to come out looking as a much better team. No matter who it is, Penn State, Ohio State, this is they're going to be the team to beat in the Big Ten until either will play Michigan. So this is a monumental game, colossal game for the not only the Big Ten but for the entire college football world. And I think Penn State gets it done. They get they have a road win over Ohio State, and uh, they march on uh, towards their uh, potential shot at the CFP for the first time. What do you guys think? Is it going to be any, any upsets? you think Penn State has a legitimate shot of beating uh, Ohio State? you think Duke has a chance of beating Florida State? Let me know in the comments below. Who do you think is going to be the most surprising team coming out of this week? Uh, follow me on Twitter, the Sports Nerd 92 Also, follow me. All my instant reaction shorts are going to be doing them all weekend. Uh, and uh, I'll see you guys next week for week nine of the uh, college football matchups. Uh, have a good weekend, guys.